Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome again, and thank you very much for your interest. Uh, we're back speaking to you again within 24 hours of speaking to you yesterday. Now, since yesterday's briefing, the Civil Contingency Authority has met further. The regulations were agreed in their final form and are now in force. They are now in force as part of our law, and the law officers, uh, the I should say the police uh, and border agency, will be uh, actively enforcing those and making sure that those strict measures are considered. We're grateful to the law officers for their draftsmanship to make sure that we could have those regulations in force. Now, we've worked to clarify many details on things such as essential workers, school closures, and some of the other questions you will have. But remember the simple aim. The simple aim is to minimize contact as much as possible. Uh, and speaking personally, I'm so impressed with the way that the community has reacted since this became a live issue early yesterday morning. The roads are much clearer, people are ordered when they go to the shops, uh, and uh, people are showing why this is such a special community. Now, we're not going to have an answer for every individual circumstance today. I don't think you would reasonably expect us to do that in the 24 hours or so since we've been dealing with this matter. But we can give some more clear instruction today. Now, Dr Brink firstly will update us on what we've seen regarding cases in the last day. Dr Brink. So, thank you very much. We've had a busy 24 hours, as I'm sure you'd expect. So, just to remind you of the situation we're in, on Friday, we detected the four community cases, and that triggered the progression into lockdown. Yesterday, through our testing processes, we detected a further seven cases. And of those seven cases, six were identified through our contact tracing, and a further community case was identified. So that brought the total to five community cases. We then carried on testing overnight and took off two further runs. So one at 1.30 this morning and a further one at six in the morning. And of the run overnight, we identified a further 20 cases. 19 of those cases were contacts and a further community case. So the summary of the situation um, up to date, as we stand now, is a total of 31 um, cases with a total of six um, potential community cases. Now, obviously, work is ongoing, and we're looking to link and, and see some of those community cases may well, as we go through the contacting um, contact tracing process, may well um, end up being linked to other cases. We don't know that yet. But that's the situation as it stands. With regard to the statistics that we'll release officially on our website, as our statistics run till 12 midnight of each day. So the 19 cases, the 20 cases that I've just mentioned, the 19 contacts and the one new community case will not be reflected on today's statistics, but will be reflected on tomorrow's statistics. But I really felt that because I had that information, I felt that I should share that with you. So we're looking at those cases now, and the contact tracing of those cases are now, is now ongoing. From our perspective, it's important. We've identified another school of interest, and there will be potential, potentially other areas involved as well. So all of that testing is ongoing. And at this time, I just wanted to also pay tribute to the St. Samson students who came through our testing tent yesterday. I was speaking to the nurses at the testing tent this morning, and they said their behavior was exemplary. They said they were cooperative, they were helpful, they were polite, and a real, real credit to their school. So thank you to those students individually, and thank you also to the school. On a positive note also is um, you might have been aware that we were due to be immunizing in our vaccination, our mini vaccination hub at the Princess Elizabeth Hospital this weekend. And clearly, because the Emma Fairbrush room isn't set up for social distancing and isn't set up to administer vaccine in the face of community seeding, is we transferred the um, vaccination program down to the community vaccination centre. And we're very grateful for Boza Joe staff for standing that up early for us. And we've managed to immunise those hundreds of people this weekend in the community vaccination centre. So that opened early, so actually opened on Saturday. And we administered, we administered some 200 doses of vaccine yesterday, and we'll be administering more today. It's ongoing as we speak now. So again, to all of those um, people who had their appointments changed, rescheduled, thank you very much. Everyone was very patient and cooperative as we transferred the immunisation programme down to here. So again, thank you to the community for working with us. 
And I think I'd like to conclude by saying at this time, we really do need to be careful about maintaining that social distancing, about hand hygiene, come forward and be tested if you have symptoms. I'd really like you to, uh, to encourage people to come forward and get tested. We're enhancing the testing capacity in our scheduling tent so we can swab over 1,000 people in the tent today now, so we're enhancing that capacity. We're ready to receive people who have symptoms, so please come forward and be tested. I finally had some questions from mothers about masks with masks and face coverings, actually face coverings for children. And it's important that it is face coverings, it's not necessarily a mask. And common sense advice here I think is really important. So we do advise face coverings for those over 11 years of age, so secondary school age children. Children under three years of age are unlikely to tolerate a face covering, and so it's a common sense. I wouldn't recommend that, and nor does public health recommend that. And children of primary school age, I would say, if they can tolerate a face covering, great, but it's not necessary. Um, it, it's something that if they can tolerate it, well and good. If not, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But it's the secondary school children that we really would be interested in wearing some sort of face covering. So thank you very much. And that's, thank that's you very much, update. Dr. Greek. That's helpful. Uh, now, as part of the lockdown, everybody knows that we emphasise and emphasise people must work at home and from home unless they're an essential worker. Now, also, schools are closed except for vulnerable students and children of essential workers. People naturally have asked for clarification on what's an essential worker and various other questions, and the Chief Executive can now update. We've largely kept to the definitions and guidelines as we saw in the first lockdown so that people will be familiar with rules which have been demonstrated by the fantastic response of the community already. We have published guidance. The full de details is on our website, gov.gg forward slash coronavirus. The aim is to ensure essential workers are all those who allow the rest of the community to be able to stay at home, maintain our critical infrastructure and provide essential services. Please read the full list online. I won't detail it now, but we have all the details uh, at an easy reach part of our website. Remember, this is decisive action to get on top of the situation as quickly as possible in order that we can get back to the state of normality as quickly as possible. Essential workers does not include builders, carpenters, mechanics, even when they work alone outdoors, unless they are carrying out emergency repairs for example, someone has lost all their power or a pipe has burst, flooding their home. It does not include, as we said yesterday, restaurant and non-essential retail staff who are not being permitted. For now, deliveries and takeaways are not permitted. As Deputy Ferbrus has stated, these restrictions will be evaluated regularly. What this means for schools is that children should all stay at home next week, unless both parents are essential workers. The only exceptions to this are households where one parent is a nurse, doctor, key health or care worker, teaching staff or staff who work directly on the public sector's COVID-19 response. Schools are working to reinstate their remote learning provision. This will not be in place tomorrow, but it will be in place soon and we will keep you updated on the education requirements on a regular basis. Our non-clinical and clinical helplines do remain open. Our clinical helpline where people are asked to report symptoms was extremely busy yesterday. They took 240 calls compared to the average daily of 30. Yesterday we asked people to email test results at gov.gg if they had been in the ship and crown or the crow's nest between the 18th and 20th of January. We received over 300 emails. Please do not call for a response or email to chase this up. The emails are being dealt with in a priority order. Our scheduling and testing teams are extremely busy at the moment. Yesterday they called more than 400 people to arrange COVID swabs. They were unable to contact 72 individuals. Please remember that our calls will show as a private number or a number withheld. Please answer your phone. Essential retailers were also very busy yesterday. Again, I would want to thank them for quickly introducing social distancing measures and all the customers that were so patient yesterday. I would once again note our supply chains remain strong. 
Other than delays due to weather, which as islanders I'm sure we're all more familiar, ferry arrivals remain on schedule and we don't anticipate any issues there. States offices and buildings will be closed to the public, but we have given clear guidance to all employees. We have the technology that means services will continue to go on uninterrupted wherever it is safe and possible to do so. Please be patient. Many of our staff re remain redeployed to resource the COVID response and additional support requirements. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh. Uh, Deputy Salisbury is now going to take you through because there are so many questions that have been asked. And Deputy Salisbury has been a constant factor with Dr Brink over the last uh, 10 or 11 months. And she'll be giving you some additional information in relation to uh, some of the questions and instructions. Thank you, Peter. Now, the Chief Executive has covered working from home and who is considered an essential worker. Of course, this means some people are unable to work and we need to address that. So policy and resources will be looking at payroll co-funding co measures early next week based on the system that was in place for the previous lockdown. And I should like to give reassurance that this will include sole traders and the self-employed. As soon as they agreed, we'll release the details, but I can say that our aim is to enable businesses to claim from the 1st of February for the week commencing the 25th of January. As we all know, public finances are already under real pressure, so we will be looking at ensuring this support goes to those who genuinely need it. We'll also be looking again at the hardship fund for individuals or families who might not qualify through other benefit support, but who find themselves in very difficult financial circumstances. For individuals and families, we know some people have found lockdown has come just as they're in the middle of moving house. Completing a move is permitted, but be mindful you won't be able to use removal firms at the moment or other people to help you move. Also, where parents share custody of a child, their child can move between the households as they normally would. But to be clear, we are not reintroducing the concept of bubbles. For now, at least for now, in all other cases, you must not mix with those from outside your household. With regard to funerals, we are reintroducing the limit of 10 people who can attend and they must observe social distancing. In relation to the two hours of outdoor exercise, we know from the first lockdown there will be lots of activities and hobbies that people will ask, is it okay? Now, we're keeping it simple and it's about common sense. Use your two hours to do what helps you keep fit and well, but it should be activities you do only on your own or with a member of your household. The only exception to this is you can exercise with one person from outside your household if it's just you and just that one other person. And you both must socially distance. It doesn't mean cyclists can chat to each other as they cycle down the road. We've been asked, what about a household with one adult and children? Yes, mindful of the well-being of that parent, that household can exercise with one other adult from another household. Again, social distancing. Now, I've already had quite a few questions asking about the Valette bathing pools. Sadly, we are having to close these for now because they are so popular and there were concerns last time about the number of people gathering there. However, this will be subject to regular review. Now, I'm sure for many, the memories of the first lockdown in the spring will be flooding back to you as you hear these rules. That's because we're intentionally not trying to reinvent the wheel. We've done this before and we know we can do this again. Thank you, Heidi. And of course, that's true. We've done it before. We will do it again. But we need your cooperation. And finally, the President of Health and Social Care, Deputy Burrard, will give us an update on health and hospital services. Oh, thank you, Peter. Good afternoon. Yesterday, we instructed care homes and hospitals in the bailiwick not to allow visitors except in the case of end-of-life visits. This was not a decision that was taken lightly. As we know, this is distressing for patients, care homes, residents and their families. But we must continue to protect the most vulnerable in our community and to ensure the resilience of our health and care workforce. Our primary care services and hospital are open, so please seek medical attention if you need it. Extra measures have been put in place, so staff will be wearing PPE, and we will ask you to socially distance. GP practices have split their surgeries so that anyone with COVID-19 symptoms will be directed to a specific surgery. This may not be your usual surgery, 
but please do not put off seeking medical support if you need it. All our service areas within health and social care will be contacting people who have appointments booked this week to discuss whether they can be carried out remotely or whether it is safe to continue with the appointment in our health and care facilities. Please do not call to check. We will call you. Staff across health and social care will continue to receive all levels of referrals, some of which will be dealt with remotely if it doesn't compromise clinical care or safety. Again, we will keep this under constant review. If the situation deteriorates, we may need to consider whether we can continue to accept routine referrals, but for the time being, we will. As we announced yesterday, all elective surgery has been postponed for Monday, but we have now postponed it for the rest of the week. We will keep this under review as we will get this area of our business up and running as soon as we can. Emergency surgery will continue to go ahead as it did during the first lockdown. Again, we know this is frustrating and disappointing. Please work with us. The sooner we can reschedule appointments, we will do. Please do not phone. We will be in touch with you. Our COVID-19 vaccination programme will continue during this lockdown. The Community Vaccination Centre will be open tomorrow at 10 a.m. at Beausejour. The centre has been designed to allow for social distancing. And as Dr Brink said yesterday, it's a perfect location due to its size and ceiling height. The safety of our community has always been at the forefront of our decision making and the design of the vaccination centre is testament to this. So if you have a vaccination appointment, please do attend it. We recommend that you wear a face mask for the duration of your visit to the centre. Please do not bring other family members if it's not essential to your care. And please be reassured that all measures have been taken to ensure the environment is as safe as possible. Now, just to mention, we've had a few calls as a text message reminder has gone out to people um, about their slot. Um, if you do need to reschedule because of your issues have changed, then please use the number. But if your situation is fine, please continue with the slot that you have and we will look after you as best we can when you come here. Um, and again, if you do have COVID symptoms, do not attend. Please phone the helpline and get yourself tested. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Al. And it's great to see all the media here and they've all got their face masks on and I hopefully my face mask will be better attended than it was yesterday. We've got to learn to do these things and uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world. But as Deputy Barad said, uh, Dr Brink has said, face masks are important and will help us uh, control this horrible uh, pandemic and virus. Members of the media, what questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Ewan Duncan from BBC Guernsey. Just whilst we're on the topic of face masks, uh, some of the large retailers are actually already run out of face masks on the island and there is a concern from islanders who are not able to get a face mask. Is there supplies on the island which can be accessed from the general public? Paul? Um, the, there, is, there is a reasonable supplies of uh, masks still available on island and I, I noticed uh, even in the last 40 hours outlets such as Quids in of doing large batches, batches of uh, face masks. But I think the important thing is what Dr. Brink said yesterday about face covering as well. So if you are waiting for um, a, a standard face mask, you could still use face coverings such as scarves and other things that you can use uh, in, in the meantime. Thank you. Yesterday, that you were expecting to see a rise in the number of cases. Have you been surprised by how quickly the numbers have gone up? And are you worried they're going to continue to go up so sharply? So, the 20 cases that we identified um, after midnight um, last night, um, of those, 19 of them are contacts, and one is a case. Um, one is a, an un unexplained community case. So, there are 20 cases, 19 were identified as contacts of a case, and one was identified as a possible community seeding. So that's really important. So this is part of our very proactive contact tracing that is happening. And the contact tracers, again, we're contact tracing until about 1.32 in the morning. So really looking at it. So they do the interviews and then they start collating and cross-referencing all of that information. So I think it's highly likely that we will see more cases 
as the day progresses today and into tomorrow, because we're doing a lot of testing, we're following up a lot of people, we're doing a lot of symptomatic testing, and of course we're doing our contact um, tracing testing. So from my perspective, I was expecting to see more cases. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew Leach, the Bailiwick Express, for Dr. Brink again on that. Uh, topic: How many people have you tested so far because of the original four? How big is the spread here? So I don't have. We're we're still in the process of testing that and uh, process of collating that data. So I don't have all of that information. Well, but we've tested literally hundreds of people. But I don't have a precise number. Thank you. Yes. Are we able to say at this stage whether any of the cases either yesterday or today were from the new variant? Yeah. No. So those that that will be tested in the UK. So we don't test here. Um, with regard to, because you look at the genetic fingerprint of the virus, so the specific sequence of the virus. So those samples are going off to Collindale, to the UK in, on Monday, and how soon we get those results is not within our gift. But it doesn't affect our management. Our management is exactly the same. It's a test, trace, isolate, and put out messaging of good hygiene and preventative me measures within the community. So. I would like to know whether we've got the new variant, but it won't fundamentally affect our response to what we're dealing with. Yes. Dr. Brink, of the 20 cases that were picked up yesterday, can you tell us the age ranges of it? Because we know that you obviously tested at St. Sampson's School yesterday. I don't have the precise age range, but it goes from uh, very young, um, very young children up to an older age group. But all of that data will be collated. What we're trying to do at the moment is manage the clinical situation and put all the preventative measures in place. And we will analyse the data. So forgive me if I don't have it all immediately. We will do it. But my priority at the moment is that initial management of the situation. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned there was another school of interest, just because I imagine every parent with a school aged child is now wondering if it's their school. Can you let us know which school you're also we're, looking at? We're going to put out more information um, with regard to education um, later today or tomorrow, and I think that's really important. What I would say to all parents is that if we are concerned about a situation, we will be contacting the schools concerned. So. Please don't all start phoning us. We will, as we work through, what we're trying to do and what we always do in this situation is we prioritize our response. So we're looking at what we need to deal with most urgently and what is of most critical impact on the community. And then we move down, down the list of priorities. So that's what we're doing at the moment. So if, for parents, if your school is one of interest to us, if we are concerned, then we will be contacting contacting the relevant the relevant groups of individuals and indeed we have already contacted one group this morning thank you yes sir uh, deputy Fairbrush, um do we have an update on the stance of Alderney and Sark and how they're viewing us at the moment and what's happening over there yeah the re these are bailiwick uh, restrictions they apply throughout the bailiwick as part of the civil contingencies authority there are members from Alderney and Sark and they've been actively participating they've been cooperative etc uh, more than cooperative they've been valued members of the authority uh, and I mean we could just say of course there are little quirks for Sark about essential maintenance for tractors and things such as that as you would expect in a community uh, of that nature but just generally the rules that apply in St Peter Port uh, apply in St Anne's. Just obviously as you pointed out uh, Deputy Salisbury there's been a lot of questions about exercise just to clarify are you allowed to drive to any places say if people wanted to drive to the beach to do sea swimming or something is that permitted? <laughs> Well, if it gets them there to be able to do sea swimming, yes. I think it's, it just brings back memories from, from last time of the deja vu. Um, it's just about mm. common sense. We don't want people just driving around the island. But if it's about exercise, it's mm. about getting out and doing some exercise. If it needs to, to, to drive... What we don't want, though, is for people to... We have loads and loads of people jamming up car parks. I mean, it's not yeah. the time of the year. I mean to go sea swimming some people love it i mean i it's it's cold enough here i think it's really goodness knows what the sea's like at the moment so i doubt whether we'll have hundreds of thousands of people um uh, get, get, getting to the coast there but it's about if you do see the car, car park is full move on because we it's all about keeping your distance and that interaction we know that's what the virus loves so just keep your distance uh, Deputy Salisbury, just another question about exercise. You know you can exercise socially distanced with one other person. Is it one person one day and another person another day, or is it, does, does it have to be the same person? 
No, it can be another person, but it's, again, it's all about that social, social distancing. And again, you, you don't now have to worry within your household. So if you're going out with your, you know, your, your children, the whole family going out, you don't have to social distance because you're, you're in your own little, little, little group. But if you're with anybody else outside, it, you must socially distance. And um, when it comes to business support, um, we know that Guernsey finances are tight. I mean, how long can we afford to be in a second lockdown? Deputy Salisbury covered that. We, we're addressing that because that's really a responsibility of policy and resources, of which uh, Deputy Salisbury is the Vice President, I'm the President. Uh, we'll be speaking with the other members of the uh, Policy and Resources Committee very urgently indeed. And again, as Deputy Salisbury said in her remarks, uh, that information will become apparent in the early part of the coming week. Yes. Uh, Deputy Fairbrush, there's obviously many people left work on Friday and yeah. were planning a normal weekend and, and they will of course have to work of some state on Monday. Many people will not have laptops or ability mm. to work from home. Presumably there's an exception for people collecting what they need to work on Monday in order to then work from home. Well I think that would be Paul. Yeah, just, just to answer that, we, we have been liaising with the various business bodies uh, and, and requesting fully understanding that people will want to pick up equipment, uh, but each business is, is applying that um, a, a, on scale, depending on the number of employees. So what we've done is expressed to try and do that in batches. So again, going back to Deputy Salisbury, you can do this as long as you maintain the social distancing. That, that is the key to all this. So we don't want to stymie business where business can work well remotely, but obviously in terms of picking up equipment, allow people to go back in, in, in small groups. Okay. Yes, sir. This question for Dr. Brink. After so long with such low numbers on positive cases, people would have obviously heard what your news about the new cases today and been potentially surprised by the numbers. What would be your message to the community who are concerned? I think it's important that we manage this, this outbreak. We manage our current situation quickly and effectively. So the message that I've got is please stick to the rules please keep the social distancing, please come forward and be tested if you're symptomatic, um, good hand hygiene, good respiratory etiquette, because if we bring all of this in rapidly and do it effectively, we should have a very, um, very rapid decline in cases. It should enable us to get on top of it quickly. But we need the community to work with us with regard to testing, symptomatics coming forward, and all the mitigations. I oh, would oh, just, just add to what Nikki's saying. Yeah, people shouldn't worry. There will be seeing cases go up. And we, we're, we're expecting that, as Nikki said. If we keep what we're doing, we should see that, that decline before long. It's just sticking with it and, um, and let Nikki and her team really do the business. Indeed. Yes, really proud. With all of the cases now being contact traced, obviously the four cases yesterday were found because they were symptomatic. How many of those that have been contact traced are symptomatic, or are they mostly asymptomatic? So... There's a combination of um, asymptomatic and symptomatics in those groups. Now, I think what is sometimes people don't realize what they've got is perhaps very, very early symptoms. So they haven't actually recognized, for example, they could have felt a bit tired and a headache, and then they've subsequently developed muscle ache and a cough or, or something like that. So it's, it's a mixture of symptomatics and asymptomatics amongst those contacts. Yes, sir. A uh, question for a member of the public, Dr. Brink. If you're due to have a vaccine next week, but you're awaiting your contact tracing reply, what should you do? Should you cancel your vaccination appointment? No, you should actually email us and we'll discuss on an individualized basis. So I wouldn't like to give a one size fits all for that because what I can then do is a specific risk assessment of the situation and give that person particular advice. So I would say, please contact us. Yes, sir. Uh, do we know how many people are currently self-isolating as a result of the contact tracing that's going on? No, we don't have that data, but we will, we will get that data together. As I say, the, the focus at the moment is the immediate clinical management of the situation. In terms, obviously you've scaled up the testing massively to try and make sure we've got this capacity. How much have we got of things like the chemicals and things like that that we need for testing? I mean, do we have quite a good stock to be able to keep doing this mass testing over a period? So at present our stocks are good and we'll be able to sustain that, but obviously we're always looking at making sure that we have sufficient, um, sufficient stocks. So we should be able to sustain it over a, a reasonable period of time, but this is why we want to respond so quickly and get it under control, because we want to try and prevent those ongoing chains of transmission. Yes. 
in terms of the cases you've mentioned, Dr Brink, can you tell us, are any in hospital or are any in any care homes at all? So there are no cases in care homes um, and there are two cases in hospital. And they from the cases you found yesterday? They're from the cases we found yesterday, yes. Yes, sir. Are we any closer to understanding the origin of the original fall? No, but we are managing to link a lot of the cases now through our contact tracing procedure, but it is too early to say how many clusters we've got, but certainly um, several of the original cases we're managing to link together. But that work is, is ongoing, so we don't know the origin, but we certainly are linking the clusters. Yes. I was very interested to read, obviously I've been following interesting what's going on in New Zealand, who obviously, like us, have very strict border controls. They've recently been reporting a case where they had a woman who did self-isolate for two weeks, gave two negative tests, like we have here, but then did go on to develop symptoms and they're now having to desperately contact trace everyone she's had contact with. Yeah. Have we considered possibly increasing our quarantine? Um, we haven't at the moment, and I am aware of that case. I think we would need to know the precise details of that case and of the testing regimen and so on before you changed a whole policy based on one test. But I think there's always the chance of very late presenters, but it is a very, very unusual situation. And can I just add to that? Is this all that we do in terms of board controls and, and everything, it's all about risk. I mean, we could shut everything down, and but then we couldn't do, we couldn't have health, health staff coming in, we couldn't have emergency repairs done. You know, it's everything is an, has got an element of risk and it's how much risk we're, we're willing to accept. We've seen that the two weeks, it, it's fine. But it, yes, if we if it if we see that things have changed and virus has changed, we we will look at it. But as Nikki said, you just can't make a whole policy change on based on on one case. No, we wouldn't do that. But what we would do is, if we needed to make restrictions more severe, uh, and we've got to have that balance, as Heidi has said, then we would do that. And we would do that as we've seen, as we acted between Friday and yesterday. We would do that very proactively and very quickly. As, as a CCA, we we are duty bound to look at things, make sure that what we do is appropriate and proportionate. Indeed. At the end of every single authority meeting, the procurer goes through what we're doing and says, "Are we satisfied that what we're doing is appropriate and proportionate?" If I can just add on that as well. On that particular case as well, I think in New Zealand, the after they left the Pullman Hotel. Um, where they'd been um, self-isolating on, on behalf, you know, well, on, with government instructions, they did also keep a very good app of all their visits of where they went. So the New Zealand government have been able to trace all the places that they visited and are now, are now following them up. So it just shows, you know, for, for us, it, even once you've once you've come out of isolation, please keep notes of where you're going, etc. That's very helpful um, if, if there is a if, is a case like this. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, what's happening in the courts with like sentencing cases and people who are going in for um, offences and stuff like that? That's still under consideration. The criminal courts will uh, continue to be open, but again, it'll, they'll probably end up operating like they did last time in the three month uh, in the lockdown of the last occasion. But they'll be kept under review. I mean, the courts will go. Civil cases, etc., will not take will not go ahead in the sense that they did before last Friday. Uh, but uh, the court system will still keep operating to do the basic essentials of the administration of justice. Anybody else with a question? No? I, yeah, sorry, you've got one. I, I just yeah. want to pass a comment and say uh, the overall feeling on social media is that this is the right thing that you've done and you've taken fast and uh, you know, the action you've taken could, could really help in the long term. And how pleasing is it? that you've seen that response from the community, uh, the, the actions that you've taken? Well, I think, speaking for myself, but I'm sure my colleagues share the same view, very, very pleasing indeed. I think that the responsibility of our community uh, bears no comparison with anywhere else. It is exemplary, a phrase used, a word used by uh, Dr. Brink when she was talking about the school children at St. Sampson's. It's exemplary. Uh, and so we're very pleased. We're not here for plaudits. We're here to make sure that a, that we control this virus as quickly as possible in this recent series of outbreaks, and B, people can get back to resuming their lives uh, as soon as possible in a more normal way. Anybody else with a question? Well, thank you again very much. We will be in regular touch. We will have regular meetings. Uh, we uh, have constantly kept this under review. We've had another CCA meeting this morning, and we'll probably have another one tomorrow. Uh, so uh, this is a high priority for all of us. And I'm listening to, uh, I don't want to, 
Sigler, Eddie Media, but I was listening to Tony Gillibus' programme, or just referenced to Tony Gillibus' programme before, and there was a song that uh, kept in my mind. We want to walk back to happiness as soon as we can, uh, but let's keep this community uh, in the way that it has and the way that it's reacting to this at recent outburst and, uh, and outbreak uh, as sensible and balanced and as decent as it can be. Thank you all very much.